Alright, so you're wandering through the internet. Entertainment levels are low. You both are about to die of boredom. What do you want to do? I look for a cool new podcast! Yeah, and I assist. Alright, give me an investigation check. Oh yeah, and roll with advantage. Bond's Journal, page 52. After we lost Eifer in Wave Echo Cave, we decided to head back to Fandolin to figure out a plan. We headed north. On the road, we found Silvarin with a broken wagon. We fixed it up and headed out towards Tribor with him. That night, we were attacked by a huge group of barbarians. Fortunately, Lythander struck most of them down at the Call of Tin. We kept one alive to figure out why they attacked, but Kinian just up and killed him. I'm not sure what to think of this new development. I wish Eifer were here, he would know what to do. You guys can pick up uh, some spears from here. Uh, they don't really have much on them outside of like hide armors and stuff like that. Um, not even the shaman. <clears throat> yeah, the shaman the shaman doesn't really have anything on her either. Um, you think these people are fairly... Well, you know barbarians of this level to be extremely uncivilized and don't carry much. Um, you, you all could... <clears throat> if you want to collect it, the spears, there would be 15 spears. Yeah. Do they act as a javelin? Yes. <laughs> I like javelins. <laughs> All right. Collect them up. So we've got loom shank around still, right? Yeah. Is he in the zone of truth? <laughs> no. You can bring you him there. We <laughs> got it for ten minutes. It's probably yeah. only been five or something. Um, <coughs> I'm going to ask him why the barbarians targeted him. Ooh, Does he have question. any feelings with? This tribe before, uh, yeah. and he would have probably disadvantage on like he's still drunk. Sure, sure. It's be hard for him. To he says, uh, "I don't, I don't know uh, why they would target me specifically. I'm, I'm quite concerned about that." Would they target you because you're a part of a group? Would they be targeting that group? I mean, if I had to guess, they might be targeting me because I was driving the wagon. They probably, if this isn't, if this is their land, they probably don't like the lion shield coster continuously trespassing. But I don't really travel that much. I mean, the only time I've traveled is is with you folk uh, when we left Neverwinter. Kind of new to this thing. And, and you agreed to make this delivery <laughs> all on your lonesome? I'm, I'm charged by, by my priest and my god to go to Redlark. And it's time for me to move on from, from Fandolin. I can respect that. Um, so, you, you guys have him in the Zone of Truth. Do you guys want to ask any more questions of him? Is it, is this the next morning or is it still the night? This is still the night. The battle the battle is like less than ten minutes behind you. I feel weakened, so I go lay down in the cart. Okay. I would ask him, um, do we have anything we need to worry about from him? No. No, not at all. I did my job. Hey, by the way, do you know who took Eifer? No. Just check. In fact I Where's your orc friend? I mean, you've got one, but I just realized that, uh... That wasn't the same one. <laughs> this isn't the same one. I, I should have yeah. a, little, a little. He's probably floating around somewhere. <laughs> he gave his life to the cause. I lay up my pipe. And uh, then we totally didn't replace him with the second one. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> you okay? Need to hear that later. Uh, yeah. I get Sullen and 
just want to go to bed. Okay. He, uh, he kind of like nods an understanding with how everybody's acting and he doesn't press any more on it. But no, he, he doesn't know any more about Pfeiffer. Okay, so uh, Kinian's watch is over. Uh, uh, Keo takes, yeah. takes the next watch and then Bon Oh, you took the first watch. Yeah. So I think Manette was. I don't. I don't remember who has not I watch. I went right after. We went first. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So Bon, yeah. you've I, got the last watch. Okay. I stirred the coals, the glass staff, <laughs> and uh, uh, morning takes hold, and uh, nothing eventful happens. You all load up. You break camp. You start heading towards Tribor. I turn to Tanuvio and tell her that I, I feel sick ever since that woman touched me. Mm-hmm. I thought I removed the, I would have removed the curse from you. Did you have it prepared? Yeah, did you have it prepared last night or? Mm. No, okay, so it first thing in the morning, now. it's prepared now. So I will pass, remove curse on you. Mark that spell. So, so we're all just fine with Thank the fact you, that he um, executes people. I don't know. Are you? I am not. But I'm going to let it go for now. You're monitoring the situation? Yes. Alright. Pretty sure mm-hmm. he was a little kinder. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because he was lawful evil or whatever he was. Mm-hmm. He was he was evil. Anyway. So uh you guys uh travel. Another another two days, uh, and it's a very uneventful two days. Are you uh, scavenging for food or eating? I'm just eating my rations, feeding the horse rations. I'm hunting. I'm just using rations. Okay. If the whole party's not hunting. Okay. Um, you guys are able to find enough sustenance on your way, and you <clears throat> you start to get to a point after the second day of travel where the, the forest is dying away and you're starting to enter into like very flat, lush land. So previous to this, it was very craggy woods. So there was a lot of hills and valleys um, on this trail. And now it is just flat land. And you can see a very far distance uh, in front of you, um, kind of like wheat fields are, are out and uh, or they would be wheat fields if it wasn't spring. Um, You see in the far distance a couple dots of of, uh, buildings out in the distance. Um, As you approach, these these dots start turning into, they start turning into a ranch. And this one, this one ranch in particular on your left. A little before we get there, I cast a spell on myself. I cast oh. Alter Self. Oh, okay. And I oh, changed from Kyo to Divid Etamon. Who is that? My Alter Ego. Your Alter Ego? <laughs> is that like is a word a backwards or something? David the Gnome. David the Gnome? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Right. So I, I am now a gnome. And um, I button up my overrobe to cover up the Emerald Enclave symbol. Okay. I grab a piece of grass and stick it in my mouth. <laughs> All right. As you're as you're uh, approaching this ranch on the south, you cross over this uh, wooden and stone bridge. Uh, it's like cobblestone uh, type of bridge that uh, arches over a small pond. Uh, it's on the thin side of this pond. This pond kind of looks uh, irregular, like a circle on one side and then an oblong uh, extension on the left side. You guys make it uh, over this bridge and you pass a sign that says the Singing Hill Ranch. And that's on the left. And as you're moving past the Singing Hill Ranch, you uh, you pass another sign 
on your right uh, that says the Merry Meadow Ranch. And the closer and closer you're getting, the more populated the the density starts to come closer, right? Mm -hmm. So so you're seeing a ranch here, a ranch there, and soon you're starting to see uh, small smart small farms and cottages, and they start to get denser the closer you get to this what you would assume is tribor. So Varin is uh, he says, well there she is, <clears throat> tribor. You know they they say it was named for uh, for a traveler who came across this this particular spot and was attacked by three boars and he fell them all. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they call it. That's what they say it came from. He says, uh, now when we get into town, there's a uh, there's a couple places that we can go uh, to rest up. We'll park. We'll park on the north end of the city square, and uh, uh, you'll make you'll want to make sure to visit the the lord of the land. Uh, she's she's said to be kind of a nice a nice person. Anyways, outside of that, that's uh, that's really all I know about this place. This is what I was told from uh, from the Lion Shield Coster. I I need to talk with. Uh, with the coster in town, and make sure I get paid from there. I guess I'm moving south. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't die. Try to stay off the bottle a little bit. <laughs> Try. I make no promises. I'll stay with them to deliver the cart because I gotta get my horse. Yeah. So I head off to meet new friends. As you get closer and closer to town, a large wood is off to the right, uh, just before you enter town. Yeah, um, I lean over <laughs> to Camille and they go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a uh, there's a very narrow path that snakes uh, <laughs> south into this wood, and you come into town, <clears throat> and right there, like Silvaran said, there's a <laughs> north there's a north parking lot basically, and it is a literal parking lot. <laughs> There's oxen uh, and and drum carts parked all in this area. There's also one on uh, on your right when you're walking in on the west side of the square. Uh, it's like an auxiliary lot. It's actually a lot larger than, than the one he's parking in. Are there any other riding dogs around? Uh, there's dogs. I mean, you could ride them. <laughs> uh, they're not as big as your mastiff, though, and they're they're barking and and they're running all around in this this parking area. Um, you're coming in uh, around morning, uh, just after morning, halfway to midday, and you're seeing like some smoke coming up out of uh, out of these parking lot areas, and uh, and you see a bunch of halflings like laying on the ground all around this one cart near the flames. Uh, a couple of them have like uh, bottles of um, what were probably liquor before uh, before the night ensued. Um, <laughs> there's one that seems to, uh, that has a loot and is like slumped over the loot and is snoring heavily. Um, uh, you think that there was probably a pretty big party here last night. In the center of the square, is a two-story tower. It's a uh, it's a stone stone tower, and it has a banner over over uh, one of the doors. And the banner is of uh, three boars, uh, all running to the right side of the banner, um, on a field of red. In this in this square, uh, people are starting to bustle about. It's not quite busy yet, but it looks like farmers are coming in and parking their uh, their wares along the outer edge of the of the square. Uh, a lot of food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you also see a uh, like a leather shop and a, a blacksmith and stuff like that uh, in this in this town. Now, so Varen will take you with him to. Uh, uh, to go settle up with the coster. Uh, he walks in. Well, first thing you notice when you walk into the coster is it isn't called the Lion Shield Coster. 
It has a golden lion uh, painted on a shield of blue. This is a like a metal shield that's hanging out as a sign. Uh, but they call this place <laughs> they call this place the Lion's Share. Huh. Uh, when he walks in, he says, uh, Sildar or Silvarin, I is this the is this the Lion Shield's coster? And uh, and one of the one of the shopkeepers um, walks up and says. Well, we don't call that here. We call it the lion's share. And yes, this is, this is, this. What what do you need? Um, and Silvarin says, well, I'm looking for Narth. I need to settle up. I've got a wagon. And they start to have a conversation. Um, some, a, a purse of gold is exchanged. Um, and Silvarin turns to you uh, after the, after everything settled up. He says, let's get your horse, and uh, and then I'm off to the bar. Uh, you guys go unhitch your horse if, uh, unless you want to buy something from here. This is a, it's a general store, it looks like, and um, a couple of the people that don't look like townies are um, are traveling to the back, and they look, they kind of look like adventurers or, uh, or thugs, um, uh, and they're traveling they're going to the back of the shop, and some are coming out with like new weapons in hand and stuff. Like that. But if you don't want to shop, uh, you you head back and unhitch your horse. I'll go my horse. Okay. I don't get off my dog. Okay. I'm just ride straight into town. Okay. And I'm gonna nice. look around for a quality pipe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. You're you're able to find a pipe at the at the lion's share or at one of the small uh, one of the small like tents that are that are put up in the in the market. I'd like to locate the what was it the lady of the land or mm-hmm. something like that. You walk up and uh, you've got this tower in front of you. You walk under the banner and inside is. <clears throat> kind of like a seating room. It's, uh, there's a couple rooms off to the side, uh, put up with wood walls and stuff, but it, it almost feels like a throne room, uh, but not quite. There's a woman sitting at the end, and, uh, she's, she's talking with a few people, uh, and they're having, it seems like a pretty pleasant conversation. Um, now, are we all going, or just... I don't know. Is this like... I don't can this be after I bought my pipe? Yep. Sure. I'm with him. Yeah, I'm okay. coming too. So, um, so you all show up, <laughs> and there's uh, there's about I don't know six bull talking with her, and they're having quite a pleasant conversation, uh, and they are like decked out in in equipment. They look like guards almost. Uh, the conversation comes to an end, and. Uh, and the six walk past you, and the Lord Protector there, she says, Hi, uh, what can I do for you? I am Divid Etmong, Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> Hello, and, and then, little um, sorcerer. <laughs> I, are there any, like, house plants around? Sure. Okay, yeah. I take a couple leaves and I pack them into my pipe as I'm talking. <laughs> and say, the question is, isn't what you can do for us, it is what we can do for you. You see, I have the strongest of magics, and I press to digitize a flame, mm-hmm. lighting the, the plant matter in my pipe, <laughs> my puff on it a couple times, and I blow some smoke, and it turns into, like, smoke bats okay. fly away. <laughs> and allow me, please, a little demonstration. Sure, sure, Watch go. Watch and be amazed. Abra Cobaldebra. <laughs> I transform myself. <laughs> to a, to a cobalt? Mm-hmm. Okay. She's like, <gasps> oh goodness! How ugly! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I puff with a little more determination. <laughs> yes, a powerful spell. <laughs> It'll last a while too. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, very, very nice. 
<laughs> well, uh, it's not an illusion either. You can like come yeah. pull them. <laughs> yes, yes. Get your best diviners. You cannot tell the difference. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I don't, I don't particularly have anything for you. Um, <laughs> but welcome to the town, <coughs> oh powerful sorcerer. Don't cause trouble, and we'll be fine. I won't. I don't want to sick the the twelve on you. I pack some more leaves. And almost putting the pipe, or putting the pipe out. Sure. Okay. Packing too many in, and <laughs> I say hi. i will do. <laughs> Fair, uh, fairly. <laughs> tell me, have you seen a castle in the sky as of late? I, I, I have. It, <laughs> it head it headed north. I'd say it'd be heading towards the the Evermores. The Evermore, where's the Evermores? <laughs> North. <laughs> North. Yeah, near, near Everlong. Not too far from Silvery Moon. Is that a mountain range? No. It's. They're moors. They're, uh. It's a swamp. Oh. Uh. You might know them as the Troll Moors. It's a pretty bad place. Don't. Don't go there lightly. Well, you see, one of our friends was taken by a giant. And the giant took off on a flying castle, and we're trying to get him back. Giants, you say? Yeah. My goodness. Take some time here and, you know, prepare for your trip. Buy what you need. Uh, yeah. I... I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody else in town might have something for you if you're looking for a little bit of work. Um, I know we've got carts that run up to uh, all sorts of different places. You might want to talk to, uh, you might want to talk to the people at the Tribor Travelers. They might have something for you. Erlum, he's, he's the one who runs it. Uh, yeah, he might have some work. Okay. By chance, do you know of any bronze dragons in the area? Dragons? No. No, God, no. I haven't seen a dragon before in my life. All right, I was just curious. I heard about a bronze dragon recently, and... Wanted to see if you knew about it. Oh, sure. Um, no. You haven't, you haven't heard of one being in this area, have you? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Just, okay. it was, it was back on the road. Some, some travelers we ran into said something about bra- a bronze dragon. I was just curious if you knew anything about bronze dragons in the area. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank, thank you for your time. Unless you guys have... Any questions? Alright. Well, uh, goodbye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you want to do? This is what the town looks like. You guys came in. So notice that the map is cockeyed. You guys came in from the, from the west. If you, uh, you're in the town center now, mm-hmm. and there's all sorts of different places to, to kind of pick around at, um, the, the Tribor Traveler, um, is what she was telling you about. Uh, there's a couple bars here and there. One of mention would be, uh, the Talking Troll. Other than that, it's, uh, it's up to you if... If you guys want to uh, maybe stick around for the day or head through. Are there any wizardly looking people in the town? Yeah, you you can ask around. Um, and there is there is a couple wizards um, of of mention. Yeah. Um, uh, there is uh, one person tells you of a of a wizard named Ergola Meltimer mm-hmm. who uh, who bought an inn called the Lion Shield House or I'm sorry the North Shield House there's there's another uh, there's another wizard um, whose name is Hyeth 
<clears throat> owns the boar's breast. Uh, this is a mansion um, that is, I believe, north of town. So they're both north. Everything is yes. north. Yes, everything is Would you like to go to one of those? I'm not sure. Whichever one's closer. I, sure. I'm interested in talking to them about possibly copying spells from their spell books. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, um, the boar's rest would be the closest right. um, from where you're located. <clears throat> so you're moving north of town, mm-hmm. and uh, you come upon this like massive mansion that's built on a, on a ridge uh, <clears throat> on the northwest uh, kind of side mm-hmm. of this area. And it's a uh, very, very large mansion. As you're approaching, there's four uh, gargoyle statues for each corner of this mansion. Um, and there's like this this gate out front, uh, and it and it's shut. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to try and open the gate? So I, um, I kind of ride up on the dog, dragging the glass staff just a little bit on the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, puffing away on my pipe that is not lit. <laughs> and um, I ride up to the gate. And I strike the staff against the gate. Knock, knock, knock. And I puff on the unlit pipe <laughs> and blow some smoke out of my mouth. Okay. All right. Um, I say, hello. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing seems to happen. Do you... Uh, I'd say, say something if you don't want me to enter. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing comes comes to you. All right. Now, seeing as I know a wizard lives here, and, you know, I need to show that I too am a wizard, um, I will mage hand open the gate. Um, is it the mage hand strong enough to open the gate? Yes. Yep. Okay. Does it open with a creek? Or- <laughs> I go hop hop hop. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if anyone else is with me, but I'm riding it. Okay. So it's Keo riding in with his dog, and, and uh, I pull my hat down a little bit to get the sure. sun out of my yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah. So you're trying to keep your your head away from the sun, and um, it's kind of like a witch's cap. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll that over. <laughs> I'm trying to look the part. You you uh, you reach the front door, and uh, with your yeah, you you hear kind of like a gust of wind um, off to your right, and uh, uh, you knock on the door. Yeah, I do the okay. same thing at the door. Conk conk conk. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so you op- the door opens, and this uh, this human uh, this human man. Uh, is looking at you. He says, "It's an awfully brave thing you're doing now. Why? Why have you come to Boar's Rest? Are you in Cobalt form or are you in... Yeah, I'm, I'm a Cobalt right okay. now. Especially one such as you, Cobalt. I'm here on a matter of academic study. A study, you say? Mm-hmm. Wow. So I'm here to speak to the Wizard of the House. That is me. And then um, I start to rummage into the pack. Sure. You know, next to me, and I pull out my my spell book, and I say, and I flip through it, showing them all the spells that most of them mean nothing to me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I explain, you know, how I inherited the spell book, and I'm trying to um, find meaning in it. Yeah, trying to find meaning in sure. the history of my family and. I would find it of great use if I could compare it to another spellbook. Oh, okay. Yeah. He says, uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, for a price, I could, I could help you, uh, maybe scribe some spells that I know and maybe even help you figure out what's, what's in your book. Mm -hmm. It would take a couple days. 
Um, but we could get maybe a couple, couple spells. Would you be interested? I am here. Any price. Well, not any price. Okay. okay. Depends the price. Name the price. A hundred gold pieces. And we might get two spells. That's a start. Okay. Let's start there. So, mm-hmm. for the next two days, mm-hmm. um, that's what that's what you'll be doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm interested in spells of the ritual nature mostly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the the cobalt is gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're not sure where he might have went. I'm sure I would have muttered something. Yeah, about. yeah, something about wizards and mm-hmm. you. You guys probably saw that he was asking around about about wizards. Mm-hmm. So what would you like to do? For... I'm very interested in spell books. That is true because that's how he met me. Yep. So what would you guys like to do for the next couple days? Maybe waiting around for him. Would you search for him or? Uh, uh, did you want to visit the that uh, tribor travelers or anything like that? I think like in the first couple hours, I would just be at the local tavern, sure. kind of overhearing just what the town is like and the atmosphere. Absolutely. <laughs> so you end up at the talking troll with Silvarin, mm-hmm. and Silvarin is uh, he's throwing money around. He's buying you drinks. Find people, you know, other people drinks at the bar. Uh, yeah, I'm not just, trying to associate with him. Too. Yeah, yeah, he's just, he's just, you get a drink, you mm-hmm. get a drink. Oh, I know, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And he's talking to anybody he can. There is a human who uh, apparently owns this place. And uh, for you, this is a, this is a dive. Like, this is mm-hmm. the low ceilings, very, very crappy place. And, uh, and there's like this makeshift stage, um, and there's a human there and he's, he's been, uh, uh, talking with some people and he, uh, he sees you at the bar and he, he approaches you, says, are you enjoying your drink? I don't know. That's certainly all right. What, what could I do to make your time here at the, at the talking troll better? I would love to attract ones such as you more often. What do you mean by that? Well, I like having elves in my presence. They pay well, and they love a good show. And you can see, like, near the sides of his, like, the corners of his eyes, like, um, some eyeliner that didn't get, like, wiped away completely. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, You can see, like, the the leftovers of like some some blush on his face you you would get the feeling that he might be uh an actor of sorts uh kind of how he holds himself um very charismatic but also very self-entitled kind of kind of person what was the question you asked again you just asked what would make oh. your stay better honestly i'm just here to observe right now. I'm just... Just... Well, enjoy the show. There is a uh, there's a show I'm putting on in a couple of hours, and uh, if you stay, that'd be nice. Maybe spread the word. And uh, and he heads off. And he starts mingling with other people. As uh, you you're hearing uh, off in the distance. Him like pitching to people about um, about maybe like buying stock in in this uh, in this tavern and stuff like that. He's, he's trying to drum up like uh, uh, financial support, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, as uh, the day goes on, it gets darker, and uh, and it starts to get pretty dark outside. And Keo hasn't came back. Uh, you do hear though out out in the parking areas, uh, the halflings are at it again, and they are they are drumming up all sorts of music, and they are having quite the time. There's four or five fires raging, uh, like bonfires raging, and uh, 
Yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, they're drumming up all sorts of all sorts of things, and you all are just kind of passing the time until Kyo comes back. Um, the The next day is very similar, and um, and you all are kind of getting getting antsy, like where is where's Kyo? At the the end of uh, actually, would it be? It's, you said it would take how many days? Two days. Two days. At the end of the first day, mm-hmm. an owl appears with a note. Oh, okay. Okay. To whom? Kinian? No. Probably. Uh, probably to Nubiel. Okay. Yeah. I open said letter. What's it say? It says, Hello, to Nubiel. <laughs> <laughs> By this time, I'm sure you've met Hootie. <laughs> All's well that learns well. Learning spells. <laughs> Cute. Alright. So you know you know now that he's at least safe mm-hmm. and learning. Uh, did you put fine a time note. frame? Fine, fine, fine. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Just a little note. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good though, because I was going to start searching yeah. the town the next morning. So the next morning comes, and you still haven't seen Kyo. Next evening comes, and still no Kyo. That was hootie mighty for me. Nice. On the third morning, uh, Kyo returns back to town mm-hmm. um, and finds you all. Where where would you guys like to be? In the in the um, in the lot, I would assume, but. Uh, there, mm-hmm. there were inns um, that you could probably stay at if you wanted to pay money. You might even be able to shack up with the with the halflings. Uh, they, the halflings seem like a almost, uh, almost gypsy like. They are very uh, inclusive. They they are very welcoming to people, and as long as you've got drinks and they've got drinks and everybody's dancing, life's good. They're also th- proper stature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good respect. You see folks. eye to eye with these people. I stand <laughs> in. in. <laughs> you do? Okay. All right. Um, I'm drunk for the half ones. Yeah. <laughs> you've got like two on each shoulder and then like like you've got you've got two on each end of your axe and you're just like Aah! and they're like Aah! And I'm sober and watching all this, just shaking yeah. my head. But, no, that next morning at the lot, I tell Keo, I'm like, you know, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you had some fun learning new spells. Mm-hmm. Appreciate the letter you sent in the future. It's a good idea to let us know how long you're going to be gone. Because we were, I was getting a little concerned, but... Yeah, how do you think? We've had one friend kidnapped. We don't want to. Yeah. How do you think I ever feel? <laughs> <laughs> but again, thank you for the note. I need to learn how to read things. Well, how can you write? Or did you have it transcribed? Hmm? Wait, you don't know how to read? No, I know how to read. But oh. I don't know how to read all the languages. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. No, I do. <laughs> Still gibberish, though. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want to start oh. heading north on the... Yeah. I thought we head north. north. On the long road? So what did you learn, Joe? You know? I learned to comprehend languages. And I made a new friend. Nice. A best friend? Mm, not a best friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's going to be cute as a traveling menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... You guys uh, start packing up. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys start packing up and uh, start moving uh, north of town before you even get past the uh, trail that heads up to the Boar's Rest. Um, you hear you hear uh, a a bell go off in the town center. Clang, 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 and you start to hear some screaming. Um, a cast man. <laughs> All right. Um, a, a guard, uh, a guard on a horse, 
just <coughs> gallops past you um, at, at full speed. He's moving south. He's going, he's going straight south of town. Uh, you look back, and he goes, he goes through the uh, town square and keeps moving south. You see, you see uh, five others uh, come in from from the east and from the west, and they're uh, they're moving in and also moving south. I shut out asking what's going on. Uh, okay, one of one of the townsfolk that is actually running north past you um, is saying, uh, "There's been reports that the orcs are attacking south of town." Don't worry, the dirty dozen has been dispatched. And then and then like he hurries. Like he says don't worry, but he's like, he's, like Fuck this. And he's booking it like out of town, going going off to his farm, probably. So, I'm gonna turn around, <laughs> supper and south. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to be um as I'm riding along bouncing, I'm gonna be flipping through pages mm-hmm. for, you know, up to ten minutes. You know, if it takes us ten minutes to get there. It won't. It but... won't, but mm-hmm. I'm going to try to ca- ritually cast um, Comprehend Languages. Oh, okay. But if we get there before we get there, we get there before we get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we get there before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be impressive. <laughs> it would be. We need to stop these ruffians from attacking this town. Mm-hmm. Orcs are no good. Orcs are no good. You know what's worse than orcs, though? Mounted orcs. When you get to this area, you see... You see orcs sitting on top of these very large bipedal, uh, they look like ostriches, really. It, so they look like art ostriches with a, like, axe for a beak. Hmm. And they are called axe beaks. <laughs> what an ingenuous name. I thought that, I thought that guy said they were orcs. <laughs> uh, having an axe face. Yeah, yeah. They are they are just riding all through this uh, this area south. Um, some are lighting bl- uh, fires on some of the farms. Uh, another is uh, killing some of the horses in a nearby pasture. Um, they're <clears throat> by the count of it, you can see uh, you think there's probably five or six roaming around here, uh, and they're just causing all sorts of general havoc. Is there anything within 150 feet of me? Yeah, for sure. sure. Okay. All right. Are they surprised by our presence, or are they no. still coming? No, they they're they're in war mode, so they're they're not going to be surprised okay. by this. Um. Okay. So, everybody, roll initiative for me, please. So. Just to lay this out, these are large creatures, so um, uh, the orcs are riding these very large birds. Um, go ahead. Uh, actually, not really. Oh, right, because you got the silencer. Yeah. Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. You all brace yourselves for the usual uh, loud <laughs> noise, and there's just kind of a muffled whoop. <laughs> Instead. Nice. And I was like, for Does a second. 19 hit? For a second, I turned around thinking that your shot failed or something. Yeah. It's like, oh no. Oh, okay. Nice. I just assumed the barrel was just gone from your gun. Yes, it hits. Takes 18 in damage. Hole. Some of that is thunder, some of that is piercing. 18 damage? Got range. Okay, so are you shooting the bird or the orc? Probably the orcs. Okay. 18 damage? Yes. Dead. Oh. The bird is still running around, but it, it doesn't have anybody to steer it now. The orc falls off, and the thing is just, it's running, just running around. It's running around crazy, but yeah. not actually causing Yeah, it's not harm. damaging anything. Doesn't know what to do now. Even idea. with an axe for a face? Yeah. It, uh, it actually starts following one of its uh, mm. one of its friends, but it's not doing anything. It's just running it's just with it now. Just because yeah, because it can. Yeah, because okay. it's kin. Cool. Uh, I spawn. I smile and reload. Nice. How far away is the nearest orc? Uh, you could 
You can see the next closest one is like 60 or 70 feet away. We'll say 70. 70? Yep. Uh, I wouldn't have been aiming at the closest one. Yeah. That's yep, that's what I figured. Range. Yep. I move to engage. Okay. I'll get within 10 feet. Okay. So you move, you do the double move. Um, all right, sounds good. Well, I'm on my horse still. Oh, you're on your horse? Yeah. Okay. So we were leaving town. Okay. So we would all be on our mounts. Sure. Um, what's your land speed for your horse? 60. 60? Do you want to double move your horse? No. So, next so a, is Keo. You're right. on your dog. So, um, who's within 30 feet of me? Is it out of our party? I'm probably right Manette, Yeah. Tanuvial, uh, Kinian. Kinian. Mm-hmm. Until he charges into battle. How do you feel about this, by the way? Like, because it's orcs. Doing orc things. Got no problem. All right, fighting them. It's, okay. part, it's their culture. They're not my clansmen. <laughs> Are they? So, I cast a quickened haste on Meta. <laughs> quickened haste. Yeah. No. I think it should be extra fast. <laughs> <laughs> I level my my glass staff. I ride to close the distance because I'm not too bright. Okay. And I pew firebolt. Okay. Pew pew. Is firebolt a save or is that no, a? No, it's a spell attack. Okay. Cigarette frames the save. That's right. And I think that was a plus five. Plus five. Ooh, and does a nine hit? Mm mm. Uh, nope. Okay. And that is my turn. Tim. I cast Scorching Ray, so I have three like mm-hmm. rays that appear. And it's 120 feet range, so I will go for whichever one is farthest right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can definitely hit one of the further ones. If the spell hits. A 15? 15 hits, yes. Okay. Yeah, nine damage because. It's probably just straight damage. Yeah, straight damage. So nine damage. Nine damage? Mm hmm. Alright. He looks rough. Okay, I will launch my second one at that same arc and probably miss at a 10. Uh, yes, that misses. So then my final one. Ooh, I rolled an 18, so 25. That's gonna hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. For 10 damage. 10 damage. Same orc? Mm hmm. Uh, killed him. Perfect. Now we're down to four? Uh, four, yes. Okay. So you killed one of the long range ones. Uh, you've got two mediums and uh, two close ups. And this is considered bright light, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm not very useful. Kinian. What's, uh, <clears throat> how close is the closest? Six, 70, 70 feet. 70. Uh, does it take an action to dismount? It takes half your movement to get on. So I'll, I'll say probably half your movement to get off. So <laughs> I'm gonna ride my horse up basically 50 mm-hmm. and uh, dismount and tell my horse to, to be safe and I pat him on the neck. Okay. And I turn and uh, I rage. Nice. And throw a javelin at the closest orc. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be the one right next to Bond. Yes. Oh no, two fives. Two fives. <laughs> oh no. And I go again. Wait, why are you rolling two? Reckless. Oh, okay. Okay. Um a nineteen on the die is gonna hit. Yeah. Six damage. I assume I don't have any movement left because the horse was acting as well. Correct. Okay. The the one next to Bon is going to strike at him uh, with his uh, great axe. He's gonna miss because at a sixteen. Yep. Fifteen damage. D twelve plus three. Not gonna last long against those star destroyers. 
<laughs> um, and that is that's his turn. A the other close by one uh, rushes up on Kinian and attacks at him with a javelin, uh, <coughs> poking at him. No, he'd be he'd be riding and throwing the javelin at the same time. That is a d12, not a d20. And that is going to miss. Like, it just glances by you. Uh, just narrowly misses. Um, he gets within within range, and he starts to hop off. And uh, So he didn't ride past throwing it? Nope, nope. Okay. So he rode up through it, and then uh, it's within 30 feet of you, and he, he hops off and... Uh, and goes to reach for his axe. He doesn't. He doesn't have enough time to grab okay. it. Um, <clears throat> now the the medium range starts coming in. Um, these were about ninety feet away, and uh, they're moving in. They they move up sixty feet, and uh, so yeah, they're within within about. Uh, uh, they're right in range with you guys, but they don't have enough time to attack. <clears throat> Manette. Everybody's about, if you haven't moved, everybody's about 60 feet away from me. 60 to 70 feet away from me. Cool. I'm not moving. <laughs> you, you know what the spell was, right? Hmm? You know what the spell was, right? So haste. Haste, haste. Yeah. Gives me an extra attack. Basically, yeah. Extra <laughs> attack, dash, disengage, or hide. Does it get rid of his object? Does he get rid of the loading property on his gun? Okay. That's a bonus action. Stuff use a bonus action to do that. So you'll have to reload as a bonus action before you attack on your next turn. Is there anything nearby that I could use as like cover? Yeah, there's a tipped over cart, uh, not too far away, uh, probably about thirty feet. So I'm pretty sure I'm still mounted at this point. I would have been mounted when we were coming down. So I'll move that direction, but I'm gonna stay on it this turn. Okay. And uh, I'll shoot. Uh, 18. Yep. That hits. Which one are you shooting? Um, the one engaged with Adam? No. Okay. I'm, I'm shooting any that aren't directly engaged with Adam. Okay. So probably the out. mid-range people that came in. Yeah. Okay. No. That was terrible. 11 damage. 11. You, uh, you blow apart one of the, one of the orc shoulders. Nice. Uh, it looks very rough. I guess I'll reload mm -hmm. and haste lets me do a, a dash, right? I'm gonna dismount and get beneath cover. All right. Cool. Fun. Whap whap. I smack the orc right next to me. All right, so a nat one mm -hmm. and a twenty. <laughs> Modified 20. Yeah, modified 20. Yep. 20 hits? Yeah. That'll be 8 total damage. The one in front of you? Yep. I'm going right. to take my... If he's still alive. I'm going to take my foot out of the stirrup and kick at him. <laughs> oh. He got stuck in the stirrup. Oh no. <laughs> The, the this one's horse out. riding thing. Is he sends out ones out. He picked up a different d20 than the one that rolled the one. No, that was, prom, that prom. was the same one. Oh, it was no, the same no, one. No, I picked no, this one up one. and went, oh, I just rolled a one with this. So I'll roll this one. one. <laughs> and then roll the one with that one. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Bum, bum, bum. Rolled two ones in a row. Mm. Kyo. Kyo. So Kyo realizes that, hey, it's sunny out. And it's a bad idea for him to be charging directly into the... So he kind of uses his movement to ride so he's not by people. Because he wasn't okay. by people at the end of his movement before. Right, right. He was just kind of riding around with his um, staff out like a lance. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and he sh shoots a firebolt at... Um, out of his mouth? Yeah. Yeah, he... Prah! But he, he attacks at the one that's fighting Bon because it's engaged directly. So he can use his pack tactics to avoid nice. the disadvantage. And 8 plus 5, 13, does that hit? Yep, that meets. 
Woohoo! And so that's 2d10. Six fire damage. Six? He's dead. <laughs> Alright. Ten. For the enclave. <laughs> I'll use um, Sacred Flame. I guess the remaining three, none of them are engaged on anyone right now. Uh, <clears throat> yes, there's there's two engaging with uh, Kenyon. One is directly engaged. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and then there is one near Vaughn, I believe. Uh, and what save is it? A deck save? No, it's or deck save. Yeah. Thirteen. Nope. Okay. It fails. So, 10 damage. Radiant. Okay. To whom? To the one with Kinian? Yeah. Okay. How are these orcs dressed? Uh, with hides and uh, bones. Okay. This hide armor. Darn. Uh, did you attack the one damaged or the, the one damaged? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kinian, the one you were squared up with dies. So now there's two left. Yep. Or two. How close is the other guy? Who's 30, to me? 30 feet. Plenty of... You close I, the gap. Yep, I got 40, so... Yep. Reckless. A 19 on the die is going to hit. Nice. For 11 damage. Alright. Hit him again. I miss. Yeah? Uh-oh. Double threes. Alright. That stinks. All right, he looks rough. Um, he uh, he swings back at you, trading uh, blow for blow, um, and he's going to miss. The other one uh, closes a gap on Bon and attacks at him, and uh, will probably miss at a eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, it is Manette's turn. With my haste action, I'm going to attempt to hide. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. Uh, you are hidden. I peek out and take aim at the last orc that's not engaged. Okay. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Um, a 10. <laughs> a 10 does not hit. Yep. I rolled a 1 and a 3. Dang. With advantage. So, Dang. I reload. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's that. That, that stinks. Bon, you got two on you. I'm going to swing at the... I'm sorry, one on you. The other one day. I'm going to swing at the the one. Okay. Whap, whap. That's a lot better. Uh, 14 and 20 again. 14 and 20, both hit. All right, so... 10 to start, and 9 after that. Dead. Whap, whap. Staff for the win. <laughs> nice. Kyo. There's one left. Kyo. He's battling with, uh, with, with Kinian. So I, I move in to the X because they're just running in circles, kind of riding mm-hmm. behind them. Yeah, and they're, they're all, like, the ones that aren't mounted, so... Yeah. The other five, they've now created like a pack and they're like starting to do like a death circle almost. All right, so I get behind them, figuring that's a, a safe place to mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. And um, they're starting a circle around Kinian, by the way. Are they? Mm. Yeah. That's not good. They're circling around the, the last mounted orc. Basically. Oh, okay. I pull off my hat with the hand that's holding the staff. And then I stick my other hand in, and I pull up my familiar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let him up in the air. Nice. And I put my hat back on. Okay. And that's my action. I still have a bonus action. Uh-huh. I'm going to shoot a quickened magic missile. Nice. At the, that remaining orc. Okay. From the tip of the, my glass staff. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Holy crap. Three dragon shaped bolts of energy streak forth. They all come around and they smack them right, right in the. In the kisser. Gut, the nuts. 
and pow right between the eyes <laughs> for 15 damage. 4 plus 1, 4 plus 1, 4 plus 1. Dead. <laughs> All at the same time. Pow. All right. All done. So, that work drops and uh, falls off of the axe beak. And the axe beak joins the death circle that's that's beginning around this, uh, around Kinian. And they break off and they run to the woods. Hey everybody, uh, it's Alan, your DM. And uh, I wanted to say thank you from the cast and crew for listening to Roll With Advantage. We really appreciate it. If you feel like you want to support the podcast or um, uh, even want to get on the podcast in all sorts of different ways, go ahead and check us out at Patreon. uh, patreon Patreon.com backslash roll with advantage. Uh, We've got all sorts of different support structures uh, that have got fun little things for each of the levels. If you can't support monetarily, comments and subscriptions go a very long ways. So if you could comment in iTunes or on YouTube, uh, that would help out the podcast so much. We also love to interact with our fans. Uh, If you use the hashtag roll with advantage on Twitter, or you can post in our subreddit, we, we will be happy to, uh, to engage with you guys. Um, it's a super fun way to get to know some of us, and uh, you get to ask questions about your favorite characters um, or about the world, uh, what's going on in the background, stuff like that. Um, we also want to say a big thank you for Incompetech.com and BattleBards for letting us use their music uh, and sound effects. They do a fantastic job, and I highly suggest you guys go check them out. Um, just beautiful work from everybody there. For a full list of the pieces we use, uh, go ahead and check out the description, and uh, you'll find it there. So, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye!